It wasn't the season that we were all expecting for the Toronto Blue Jays, but they are in the mix for the number one overall pick, and that could change the entire course of their franchise. So we'll break it down and much more in this episode of Jays Digest. Welcome in, everybody, to Jays Digest. I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. And uh, Nick, this is not the season that we were waiting for for the Toronto Blue Jays. We were expecting some playoff baseball. Instead, I find myself tuning into Padres games, wishing that I was a Padres fan because it is so electric. And I just, I love playoff baseball. Nothing can replace that vibe. Uh, but the, the Jays are just not going to be there. It wasn't meant to be for them this season, whether it was injuries, lack of performance for a lot of guys. But what could happen for them is them getting the number one overall pick which could swing the pendulum in their favor to becoming a competitive franchise again. Now, it's it's known that draft picks don't always work out in Major League Baseball, but the last time that the Blue Jays had a top five pick in the draft, what did they do? They selected Austin Martin, and they traded him for Jose Barrios, who has been one of the most consistent starters in baseball for his entire career. And to me... That's a pretty good draft pick right there. Whether he pans out for you or not, it's about what he can get you in return or what he can provide to your franchise. So I think the Jays did pretty well with their last fifth overall pick. They have pretty good odds this time around, and the draft class, pretty damn loaded. Yeah, and what was, like you mentioned, a very disappointing season. And no matter what team you're going to root for in the postseason, the Jays will not be there. But if there's one thing to take away from it, we saw some good things. We obviously talked about the prospects. But you mentioned it, a top pick, especially in this upcoming draft, is going to be and will be hopefully very important for the Jays, whether they decide to keep it, whether they decide to trade it like they did with Austin Martin to get a guy who's a front line really, uh, starter for the Toronto Blue Jays and will be for the foreseeable future. Ethan Holiday's name is one that keeps coming up. When you look at the potential odds for the Toronto Blue Jays, I, they're pretty decent. Now, you never want to be in the mix. We, we didn't want to be making a video. If we would have said this at the start of the season back in March, hey, we're making a video on the Toronto Blue Jays being the top, one of the top five teams to land the number one overall pick, I would be very surprised. But we're here. It's ultimately the situation. They're losing a lot of games down the stretch, which is actually working towards their benefit when it comes to this because obviously you want them to win. You want to build a winning culture around the prospects. But Vladdy's playing well. A lot of the young guys are playing well. And Peter... Um, they're in the mix to land the first pick in this draft and who's presumed to be Ethan Holiday, brother of Jackson Holiday and some a son of Matt. I can get used to that. And just remember, Blue Jay fans, it could always be worse. You could yeah. always be the Chicago White Sox, who should be at the number one spot, by the way, but because they've been so bad in the past couple of years and the new rules with the with Major League Baseball, they're not able to to get a, a top, uh, the top pick or the, a top five pick for that matter. So they are on pace to have the worst season of all time, the worst regular season of all time. And if you pull up those draft rankings again, Nick, they're 10th, they're 10th. That's yeah. uh, that's not where you want to be. So if you want to complain, if you want to sulk, and if you want to just be miserable about this Blue Jay season, by all means, you can't, you're allowed to do so. But at the same time, um, I would much rather be a Blue Jay fan than a Chicago White Sox fan right now because not only do they not spend money in free agency, they're about to get uh, probably a lottery ticket prospect who um, may not even pan out for them because most of their top prospects that they've had in the past few years are either out of the league right now or rotting away in AAA. So, again, terrible season, a season from hell. Let's wipe it away. Let's burn all of the game footage that came along with the 2024 year. But at the same time, let's remember that it could always be worse and we could always be the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely one way to put it. When you're looking at the Jays odds at 50, they're obviously 73 and 85. Peter, I want to discuss a little bit Ethan Holiday, And obviously, just he's probably going to be the number one pick in the upcoming draft. And if the Jays get, obviously this is going to be something we cover as the draft approaches. And it's been a while since we've been able to, we've had this conversation about the Jays having a top pick in a draft because obviously they've been winning the past few years. Now they haven't won the playoffs, but they've been winning in general. And he's widely considered the best eligible player in the upcoming draft. And if selected first, the holidays will join Payne and Eli Manning as the only brothers to each be drafted number one overall. And obviously Jackson right now is playing for the Baltimore Orioles in a playoff race. He's not really doing very good, but I'm sure he'll come into his own and be a very good player. But when you're looking at some of the stuff of Matt's other son, Ethan, 
He spoke out and said, people look at the size and some of those raw abilities. He's got 111 mile per hour exit velocity with the bat, incredible arm, and some of the tangible things at a young age that he was further along than Jackson was. So a lot of prospect rankers, even his own dad, Matt, is saying that he has a further... He's a further along prospect than his brother Jackson was at that time. And you can pause and read this. Basically, Jackson or Ethan's going to be a very, very good prospect. And he kind of mimics Jackson a little bit, mimics his dad in some ways as well. But if we're talking about who the Jays can get in a number one overall pick, obviously with the MLB draft, there's no not always a consensus number one overall pick. You think back to guys like Spencer Torkelson, who still struggled, starting to get a little bit better now. But there's no surefire thing, but Ethan Holiday seems as close to that as we had in a while when it comes to a number one overall pick. And it's a decent year, even though, you know, we don't want to be talking about the Jays doing bad. It's a decent year for the Toronto Blue Jays to be in the hunt for a number one overall pick. From Shohei Otani in December to the number one overall pick just uh, just months later. Yeah, definitely not where you want to be. And we just got to keep it into perspective that prospects don't pan out overnight. Like you spoke about Jackson Holiday. He's had his struggles despite being the top prospect in baseball, despite being touted as a generational talent. It doesn't happen right away. So even if the the Jays do land a top pick and they land a top prospect, uh, whoever it is, whether it's Ethan Holiday or someone else, it's going to take him time. Like even Bryce Harper struggled when he first came into the major league. So it's not an exact science. It's very hard to predict. But if you land yourself in the top five, you're not only guaranteeing yourself a, a high-end prospect, you're guaranteeing most likely a trade chip as well. So let's say you're not happy with the development. Like the Blue Jays kind of gave up on Austin Martin a little bit early, and it hasn't panned out for him. But in return, they got Jose Barrios, who signed a seven-year extension. And like we mentioned earlier in the intro, has been one of the most consistent starters in baseball, doesn't miss starts, he's durable, he's a great fielder at his position. Like he, That's exactly what you want. You want a guy like that. So maybe if your prospect doesn't pan out for you, you can land a trade like that, and that helps the Blue Jays be a little bit more competitive in the immediate future. Maybe they'll regret it down the line, but I can't remember the last time the Blue Jays traded prospects and um, and we've been like, oh, man. They shouldn't have done that. Maybe the Mitch White trade, but even even that, that I mean, it's not a groundbreaking move by any stretch because uh, Nick Frasso has been on and off the injured list. So, yeah, it's not an exact science with prospects. We know that, especially as Blue Jay fans, an organization that has not had too many great prospects since Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. But, hey, you give yourself a better chance of hitting on one of those guys if you draft higher and that's the position the Blue Jays have put themselves in. And if you're going to be bad, be really bad to at least assure yourself a top prospect. And luckily that's what the Blue Jays have been doing the past uh, couple months here, the, the yeah, whole season the, really. Yeah. And yeah. even the Dalton Varsho trade where they gave up Moreno, like that's starting to age fine for both teams and the Jays got a very good season out of Varsho and he's going to play a prominent factor into the next upcoming handful of seasons in center field. So let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on this. Obviously not the conversation we wanted to be having, but they're not playing well. They're losing a lot of games, and they are uh, skyrocketing up the rankings, not in the playoff rankings, but in the draft <laughs> rankings. So let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on this. Would you want to see them select Ethan Holiday? I think we all would if they get the number one overall pick. We'll see you guys soon.